What must a product label include if a restaurant wants to bottle and sell a barbecue sauce? So if you're looking to start a barbecue sauce business, you're going to need to have a nutritional analysis label done. Well, in this video, I'm actually going to show you specifically how to create a nutritional label for a barbecue sauce. I've actually done several videos here on marketing food online, all about different types of food products that you can create your own nutritional analysis for. And I'm back on the website, the recipal.com. I actually will have a link down below if you guys want to check out this resource. But I wanted to do a video because we actually had a question uh, from one of our subscribers on our other channel. That was in regards to he had a restaurant and he had a barbecue sauce that he wants to retail it and sell. So we wanted to know what he had to put on it. Well, of course, a nutritional analysis is something that you can put on it. And you can actually do this yourself with this type of software. So I've got a, a recipe here on my side of my desk here. I'm actually going to plug it in and I'm going to show you how this works for a barbecue sauce. Um, so that you can have this created and then just print it and put it on your product itself. Now, first off, when you begin, you want to take a look at this section here. As I did always, you want to label your product. So let's just say this is um, spicy. Let's say we'll do a spicy barbecue sauce. And it's going to be, let's just say, with 16 ounce bottle. That gets you started. Now, you begin to type in your specific um, ingredients. And we're going to do ketchup. Let's say we've got here, and by the way, now you can use, if you've got a specific brand and you're using that just in your recipe, if it happens to be Heinz tomato ketchup or if it's organic or Heinz organic, whatever it may be, you can use that as well. I'm just going ahead and use ketchup, the general vague kind of generic version there on that. I'm going to put in apple cider. So apple cider vinegar, as you see, you'll notice also it'll automatically propagate. It'll show up immediately on the side here. You can choose which one it is. Again, this is a brand, Bragg's, but I'm just going to use Red Gold Apple Cider. So we add that. So now remember, you're just going to add your ingredients at first, and then we're going to go through and break down the actual size and the quantity. So let's see. We have Worcestershire. There it is, Worcestershire sauce. I probably said that wrong. My son says it differently than I do, but Worcestershire, I guess it is. All right, so then you have a light brown sugar. I'm going to type that in, light brown sugar. There it is. It pops up like it always does and we'll add that and then we're almost finished and then we can show you how to break down the size of these ingredients so we have mustard all righty there we go and then we're going to add in a little bit of paprika spice there you go it automatically comes up and we have onion powder spices onion powder fantastic and last but not least we have garlic cloves. We go back over here. Raw garlic. There it is. Fantastic. Now, the great thing I love about specifically, I use Recipal. I've used it quite a few often times, actually, for some of the trail mixes and other snacks that we use uh, that we have within our facility that we make. Um, and also, let me add water really quick. Just tap water. And it's actually, it's very, very easy. They've actually updated the website just recently. The interface is brand new, so it makes it super easy for you guys to use. But I wanted to do a series, and you'll see I have a handful of other uh, peppercorn. Yes. Okay. We have a handful of other videos on different food products. So I'm going to go through a list, and over time, you're going to notice we have a whole bunch of new videos for different types of products. So definitely check back with us if you've got other items that you want to make. One and a half cups of ketchup. So, <clears throat> all right, so great. Here we go. This is interesting. So, this says quantity of one and your unit. Now that's gonna be one cup. Now my, my recipe calls for one and a half cups. So we're gonna do 0.5, there you go. So that'll update it to one and a half of this measurement, okay, this unit. Now be aware, there's two different things. Quantity and unit are different. So apple cider is half a cup. So if it says a cup, perfect. This is gonna be half a cup, so we're gonna go 0.5. That cuts it down because otherwise it would be one as a one cup. Worcestershire is a quarter of a cup. So now this is going to be 0.25, okay? Do you understand how this works? If you have any questions about this in the comments, let me know down below, of course, in the video, and I'll get to it as soon as I possibly can. Light brown sugar, three quarters of a, of a cup. So we're going to do, let's say, so I'm going to round this off, three quarters of a cup. So a cup is eight ounces. You know what I'll do just to make this easier? I'm going to do eight ounces. That way, that way we can make it fast and understandable and easy. Okay, so spices. Uh, we have yellow, I'm sorry, spice mustard. That is going to be the yellow mustard, two tablespoons. There it is. So we're going to go up to two. There we go. Now we have two tablespoons. Next up is paprika. 
You have a tablespoon of that paprika. Well, that's already set. Perfect. Next is onion powder, two teaspoons. <coughs> Excuse me, guys. So we're going to go to two. And then next up is your garlic. You have four cloves raw. Let's see. We don't have it. We're going to do four cloves. Fantastic. All right, so this shows one clove. I actually put four cloves in this particular recipe. And there is the clove, and we have four. And water is going to be half a cup. So we put one cup, okay, now that's going to go to 0.5, half, and then peppercorn is actually just one little teaspoon. And let's see, actually it's a tablespoon, there it is. And then it's already set at one, so we have one tablespoon of peppercorn. And you're all set. Now, what we want to do is we want to go over and we want to look and see what this uh, label looks like. And again, this section right here, all of this, I don't need it at this moment for this particular recipe. And again, I'll do a video on those. But how many packages does this recipe make? Okay, so this actually will make one full bottle. Let me see if we got it up here. I'm sorry, let me see. Okay, so this is going to make um, packages one full bottle. That means that that recipe will create a bottle's worth. Now, it's actually 20 servings. So we're going to put in, we're actually going to go in here. It's going to create a 16-ounce bottle. So suggested serving size is going to be one ounce. And you're going to have 16. So this is going to be how many servings will that bottle have? So your barbecue sauce will create, this recipe will create a specific bottle. And then you're going to break it down by what would you recommend the servings. It's going to be one ounce because it's 16 ounces. So that shows you that you'll have 16 servings. And of course, let me move this down here. And we're going to show you in a second your ingredient statement. All right, so you're going to go through here, and you want to double check to make sure everything looks good. This will have all of your ingredients, and everything else here looks good, checks out fine. Now we're going to go over here where it says label, and simply click on the label so we can see the label. And there you go. You've got your app, a completely finished, absolutely done nutritional analysis for your barbecue sauce. It shows your sodium. It shows your sugars, everything that you need, and it shows your ingredients. Okay. Now, there are different formats of this type of label. So depending on how your bottle looks, guys, you can change this instantly. That's another thing that's really cool about Recipal, that you can go to tabular, which is going to be this more rectangular, right? This is actually a great one. And I, this is the one that I normally see formatted for barbecue sauces. So you should definitely use this one, in my opinion, but that's up to you. And of course, the linear, which is even smaller, more compact, but again, has all of the information that you need right in here, okay? Now, allergens, Damien, what is what I do with that? Now, what I do, uh, of course, because you want to check off the things that are inside your actual product that may be in there, okay? If you've got milk, if you've got egg of some time, wheat, fish, tree nuts, and so and such. Now, I don't have that in there, but if your facility handles these, I would highly recommend that you add them, okay? That's actually what I have done here on the bottom. You can see made in a facility that handles tree nuts, soy, wheat, and dairy. You want to just be careful and make sure you just cover that. The FDA does have, I believe it's nine allergens specifically. Uh, yeah, there they are. The nine. So that would be these right here that they require to be on your label. So other than that, you're all set. You just need to choose what kind of format or layouts really works best. If you're doing a bottle, remember that it's cylindrical. It's circular. So you might want to honestly go with the tabular. This one is really good. All right. So that's how you make a barbecue sauce label. So if uh, you were asking the question that you have a restaurant and you want to create a special barbecue sauce, how do you label it? What goes on it? This is how you can do it. If you have any questions, definitely check out the links down below. We've got other resources as well. Um, and definitely you can click on that link. It'll take you to Recipe and you can start making your own sauce labels. I'll see you guys on our next video.